I'm going to talk about how I wrote a song. As of right now, the song doesn't have a title, but it will by the time this video comes out, so I'm going to put the title of the song right here. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different ideas in this video, and I don't expect 100% of people to find all of them 100% interesting. Please feel free to check the timestamps in the description for what you're the most interested in if you find you're not interested in something that I'm talking about. There's plenty of other things that I'll be talking about in this video. I won't be offended. I won't tell anyone. It'll be our secret. If you heard the song yesterday, you'll know what the song is about. But here's the story. I grew up in a really rural town, not a lot of people around, in a forest. And I had two sisters. I was the oldest of three girls. There's not a whole lot to do in the summertime when we were growing up, so we kind of had to make our own entertainment. One day we decided that we would be statues in front of our driveway and entertain the cars as they drove by because we had nothing better to do. So uh, we did that. We got very excited if there was a reaction. Because I grew up in the 90s and it was before Instagram and what did people do? What, what gave people that little dopamine rush? You had to do something for people to notice you. I'm going to talk about the writing exercise that I used to get this all written down. I'm reading this book called Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. It's a book about writing. I think it's geared toward people who are writing novels, but I purchased it when I took a creative writing class in college and I started reading it and the way that college goes is you don't really read for fun. At least I didn't. So I abandoned it and I picked it up again because I thought I needed some guidance with my writing. One of the things that caught my attention is in the chapter called Short Assignments. She wrote about how she has a one inch picture frame on her desk and she keeps it there to remind her of if you don't have ideas um, just to put something in a picture frame that's super small and write about what's going on there. So I thought about this scene. So I've been thinking about a lot of different things when it comes to songwriting and one of the things that I was thinking about was trying to write a chorus. If you've listened to a few of my songs, you might have noticed that I don't write very many songs with choruses. In fact, I think I've only written two, but I thought it, it, I should try to put myself in that envelope a little bit. As a, a songwriter, I should try to make something that repeats so people can hear what's going on. The form I chose for this song is A-B-A-B-A. -A -A. In the A sections, the first line is the same for all of them, and the last line is the same for, is mostly the same for all of them, and I'll talk about that later. I gave my different sections different functions. So for the A section, I'm mostly painting a picture of what things look like and feel like and smell like and all kinds of, like what kind of world we're living in in this song. And then in the B section, I'm describing what's happening. I'll read the lyrics for you and I'll talk about a couple things as they come up. Here's the first A section. Three young girls standing at the end of the driveway. Trees hiding their house 40 yards away. We had a long driveway and no one could really see our house from the road. If we were expecting company, we had to kind of stand out there to make sure if they were coming over for the first time, make sure they could see our driveway. The air smells bright with forest as the sun shines its last beams of the day. Blackberries on the bush have just started to turn slightly rosy. I chose the image of the blackberries to illustrate what time of year we were in. So we had a big old blackberry bush at the end of the driveway. The berries were always really, really ripe on my birthday. My birthday is August 11th. So I would use the blackberries on the bush in my mind to kind of measure where we were in the summertime. So in this situation, blackberries on the bush have just started getting rosy because they, they start out green, right? And they start to get their color sometime around July. I, I wanted to just illustrate that we were in a warm weather time of year. The sun stays out really late. 
The air is pretty still this time of year in this area. Northern California, Sierra foothills, where I grew up. First B section. One car approaches from afar. And the three girls snap into a pose. A pose, a silly pose. So I, I was trying to use some repetition. And eagerly await a honk or a wave or a smile or anything that shows that somebody saw them. Growing up in a really small town, it can be hard to get interaction. So we were just wanting to interact with the world somehow. The second A section, three young girls standing at the end of the driveway, facing all directions, arms in different shapes. The birds are singing all around, and their shoes are dirty as usual. The, the girl's shoes, not the bird's shoes. Blackberries on the bush have just started to turn slightly rosy. Second B section. Another car passes slowly by and honks and waves as the girls perform a dance. A dance. A silly dance. This was life before Instagram. The kids never knew if they were cool until somebody told them. In the last A section, the perspective shifts a little bit. For most of the song, the narrator is someone who is observing from afar. They're observing details, they're, do they're observing what's happening. In the last one, the perspective shifts a little bit to be more towards what the girls are thinking. It's the last verse. Three young girls standing at the end of the driveway don't know why they're there. Maybe they'll never know. But this is the time to celebrate that someone finally noticed them. And the blackberries on the bush are starting to turn slightly rosy. Just one more thing about language before I move on. In the first two A sections, I say blackberries on the bush have just started to turn slightly rosy. It's, it's an observation like, oh, this has happened. In the last line, I changed it a little bit. The blackberries on the bush are starting to turn slightly rosy. I changed it to, I think it's called the participle, present participle. I'm not a huge linguistics grammar nerd. To me, changing the words just slightly that way brings us more to the present. You can say that this passing by, you can say, oh, blackberries on the bush have, st have started to turn slightly rosy. And you can say that in conversation when the blackberries aren't there, but to say that the blackberries are starting to turn slightly rosy, I feel like it brings us closer to the blackberries. And I know that's super subtle and that's, I don't know if that actually makes sense in that way. I just wanted to point out that I did that. If someone out there appreciated that I did something slightly different there. So you know the saying, good composers borrow, great composers steal? I was already in this mode when I was practicing the wayward wind, and I really like that chord progression. I really like it when it goes G, G7, C, C minor. I really like that sound. So I, I decided to use the same harmonic structure in the A sections as, a, as was used in the Wayward Wind. I tried to do it in the B section too, but I got a little, I'm not creative enough yet to make it sound different enough because the chords are very similar in the B section of the Wayward Wind and I had to change it. So, but I'll talk about that later. Here are the chords for in the A section. I started with G and then I go to C and C minor, and then back to G, and then D7, and here's that fast progression, G, G7, C, C minor, back to G, and I changed it here, in the wayward wind it goes, So it goes G to D7, back to G. But I, because I put so many words in the last line, 
I had to put some more harmonic movement in there. I just felt like it needed to be like that. So I go G, E7, C, and then G. And that's the A section. I was mindful this time about the contour of my melodies, so I tried to make it so every first line of the A section went up. trying to be mindful of the contour, keeping it low. That way when I get to the third line of the A section, I can go down. And the air smells bright with the forest, and the sun shined its last beams of the day. Blackberries on the bush have just started to turn slightly rosy. So we have two lines that start going up and two lines that start going down. Here's the B section. I went to C chord, starting on C chord. And then G. And I always like a little secondary dominant in there, so I put A7 to set up for a long D7. You know, because a 5-7 chord builds lots of tension and you're so excited for the time that we get back to the A section. Melodically in the B section, I kept it pretty low for most of it, except when we get to the long D7. When I get to the long D7, I do a lot of, I do some short lines that go up. So I go like, pose, pose, silly pose, just to make it excited to like kind of build up and build up and build up. I hope you found this video helpful. I always like to know what people are thinking when they are writing songs, so I hope it helps you that I am sharing this. I have a scheme in mind for future songs and future songwriting exercises, so I'm excited to share that with you, and that's going to be over the course of a few videos in a few weeks, so look out for that. So until next time, stay mindful, stay musical, and stay out of trouble.